I will still have teeth. <laughs> Word. <laughs> well, uh, the the first thing I want to jump into is obviously E3. You know, we have Tinks here. Um, Tinks, give us, you know, a few minutes summary real quick before we jump into this, how your E3 was, your experience, how you got down there, who you went with, what you, you know, some of the cool things you did, um, and, uh, and how it went. Okay. So, um, I went with two Resolute members, Chivlet and Boomslang, and, um, Basically, you, there's conferences and stuff before E3 even starts. And then so we went to the Bethesda conference, I mean, showcase and the um, PlayStation one. So we were there live um, mm -hmm. when all that was. We tried to go to the Ubisoft one, but there was uh, we didn't make it in. Uh, you kind of have to wait in this long line and then you just don't know if you're going to make it in it or not. Um, so then... <laughs> Um, and then we went to E3 for three days, and it's just super overwhelming. There's so much to do, and there's actually a lot of people there, so we didn't get to do, I didn't get to do nearly as much as I wanted to. I didn't get to play everything I wanted to, even in three days, but spent a lot of time on... Are the um, lines super long to everything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We waited. The things that we really wanted to do, right when it opened, we went straight to it, and even then, we were waiting a couple hours to just to play a so trailer. tell everybody Boomsling and Shivlet. What they they have a podcast, yes, right. And so, right. what what game what what was the game they were going for? The Division, which is uh, by Ubisoft. So, yeah, I just wanted everybody here. I mean, yeah, they're they're big into the Division. Obviously, you know, mm -hmm. those guys are are awesome, awesome people, and they were super excited. You know, right. if you want to know about the Division, go check those guys out. It's awesome. Yeah, they but have a ahead. podcast. Um, it's Boomslang Gaming on um on YouTube. And uh, so we spent a whole day on the division. That game, oh, that game looks so fun. I don't know if you want me to get into that now or later. No, later, later. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, don't do it. so that's super. that's kind of it. Yeah, and the food is super expensive, and it's twenty dollars to park every day, and all my money is gone. But I had fun. So, so you <laughs> guys stayed in a hotel? Um, we stayed at Chivs. At Chivs. Okay, cool, cool. So Chiv lives lives down there. I didn't know that. Well, that's Good to sweet. Know. <laughs> well, um, the first thing, and I'm guessing you went to this, right? The the Xbox conference, right? Um, we didn't really care too much about the Xbox one. Oh, good people. Sorry, sorry, Josh. Just shed a tear for Josh oh. and everybody out there. We had um, some issues. We had some issues with our hotel, so we were up super, super late trying to get that figured out, and then so we didn't get actually home until four o'clock in the morning, and we had to be there at five thirty or six. So we decided that. If it was PlayStation, we would have gone, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, cause that's because all you guys play on PlayStation mainly, so... Right, right, exactly. Um, not saying that you got... So, actually, you guys also play on Xbox. You have an um, Xbox, right? I play a little bit, but, I mean... Not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I got it for Halo, just to right. play Halo. Well, the big things on the Xbox, obviously, that were announced for everybody out there. I'm going to run through these real quick, and we'll go back through them and, and talk about the ones that we really are passionate about, is obviously Halo 5. Right, which looked awesome. You have Warzone, the the new multiplayer that looks incredible. Uh, the the backward uh, compatibility uh, that everybody is raving about. Oh. Recore, which is a new game that's exclusive, uh, first party. A, the new controller, which was one of the best announcements I think of E3. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Plants vs Zombies Two, Cuphead, which looks like an awesome indie oh, game, which so I'm good. pumped to play. Uh, Tomb Raider, the rare replay. Uh, Rare's new game, Sea of Thieves, Fable Legends, Oculus Partnership, where uh, every Oculus that, that ships is going to have a uh, Xbox One controller. And then uh, I just said Xbox One, and no lie, my Xbox One just came on. I heard it. Um, <laughs> the the Micro uh, HoloLens, which they showed off Minecraft, which was just, it was awesome to see that technology all right it yeah. was it was really cool to check it out gears of war the beta and the uh uh, uh ultimate edition that's going to be coming out here at the end of august i believe so that's uh that's the big ones i know there's some probably smaller announcements that came out of uh out of the xbox one but those are some of the big ones uh, josh obviously we could we could all talk about halo for a long time but it looks great sure. 343 looks good Warzone looks like a lot of fun uh, I was talking to a few of my guys uh, on Xbox before I got, got on tonight. I was actually playing some Gears of War and was talking to some of the guys over there. And David, you know, uh, you know, uh, Boshek and 
Uh, I had Gamble Big Greg over there, and we were talking a little bit about it. And you know, they were saying, "Yeah, it's more Halo." You know, this is this is your complaint, Null Zero. It's more Halo, right? Yeah. It's Halo, and you're kind of done with it. Well, just like you're kind of done, uh, you know, with Call of Duty in a way. There's uh, yeah, that. I'll keep buying it, but but they 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 said microtransactions. That doesn't help. Right. Mm. Um, I don't know. I said, someone sent me a tweet, and I said, because last week on the podcast I said something about 343 making a good Halo, and someone reminded me that they made Halo 4, and Halo 4 is a good Halo, but, like, I kind of meant towards, like, the multiplayer. Like, we all know Halo 4's multiplayer didn't stick, and so that's kind of what I'm like, well, let's see if this one sticks. It looks more like the old Halos, but let's see if it sticks. Who knows? Well, you know, I mean, it looks great. I've, and, and what these guys were saying is the same thing I think I agree with is I'm going to buy this game for the campaign. I've played the Halo campaigns. Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to buy this game to play the campaign. And, and that's really the bottom line of it. I don't know how much of the PvP I'll get into. You know, we might get addicted. David, we do have an addictive personality, so we might get maybe. addicted. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're just like, mm, maybe. Yeah. Well, I like. You don't speak, of, so I speak of mm, maybe. How about the backwards compatibility? I mean, yeah. Uh, wait I a minute. Know. Wait a minute. That was better than Nintendo's press conference because it had more Nintendo games in it than Nintendo did. So <laughs> just to throw that out there. Yeah. So if you want to play Nintendo games, buy an Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, buy Basically. the rare collection. I mean, right. I mean, the the reality of the backwards compatibility to me is like, David, you said it best the other day on the phone. Everybody thinks that nostalgia is what they want, but really when they try to go back to it, they don't play it. Because we all bought next-gen consoles to play next-gen games. Right. You know? That's that's not true for everybody, because I still dust off my carts and blow the dust out and and play my old... uh, Tinks, are are you going to play your Xbox more because you have backwards compatibility now? Is it is it really backwards compatibility though? I don't know what you guys went over. Well, it's um, it's, it's no a, no no no. Sorry, hundred... I didn't mean I didn't mean I meant it like as a dig at X, Xbox, not an actual <laughs> question. Sorry. Um, it's isn't it like a library like what what Nintendo did? I mean, it's just a library, right? I mean, you don't have to buy them over, but is it really backwards compatibility? I don't think it is. Well, no, what, it, well, the they point said is, it was. Why, and they who said cares? 100 games. And it's who like, cares? who cares? Apparently a lot of people care, dude. No, but see, I, that, this is I what I told Troy. I love playing old games. I do love playing old games. This is what I told Troy. I was said, the other day we were on the phone, I said, the thing about backwards compatibility is I told him, I said, it's exciting for me because I have just about everything that ever came out to Xbox Arcade. And so my boys... He's will, not kidding. <laughs> my boys yeah, love everything. a lot of those games. And mm-hmm. they actually told me a few weeks back they would love for me to get an Xbox 360 again to play those arcs. And okay. it's like, okay, well, now I don't have to. So, wonderful. But yeah. I'm like, at, at the end of the day, for me as a gamer, I'm like, I, at first I was kind of excited about it. And then I was like, but wait, I'm not going to go play these games. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think the biggest deal is anybody on the fence about that are sitting on a last-gen console that were waiting to make a jump. It makes If you have a 360 right now, it makes the jump a lot easier because it's like, well, the games I've been playing on my 360, if they go backwards compatible, awesome. What I'm curious to see is, like, you know, how many people do this and continue to play Destiny on an emulator? Will it, they even emulate Destiny? And then, two, who it. would continue to play the Destiny on there like that? And I'm just like, I don't know. Right. I just don't I see ha- I think a, a real good purpose amount of time. There. I think a good amount of time has to go by because I, I have emulators on my computer and I use them all the time, but it's not for games that are like five years old or, you know, a couple years old. It's like Nintendo games, Sega games. Right. But to like me, that. the whole backwards compatibility is more towards saying, hey, you may not have a ton of money and you may want this new console, but you can't justify it because it's saying goodbye to your library. So we're going to do this. You're going to be able to buy the new console, go ahead and jump in there but you don't have to say goodbye to the library. And like that could be okay to, to an extent, but like if you're playing Destiny on your 360, you can't play it there. And it's like, well, now I'm still going to have to boot the 360 up. I don't know. To me, it's like more well, than likely the stuff that you're going like, to get is not the stuff you're playing. So I don't even see how it makes the jump I that think, easy. I think you're right, though. I think you're right, Noel. I think that it has to do with making people who are on the last gen jump to the, jump mm-hmm. to the next. I think mm-hmm. that that's what the big deal here is yeah and that's that's what nightblade just said in chat is that it's a good idea so that 
all the 360 players who have just been holding out will now move to Xbox One uh, because they need the sales, let's be honest. So Mm -hmm. it's a good idea, and I don't see why you wouldn't do it. I mean, obviously, on our side of things, PS4, there's PS Now, so... Uh, you yeah. know they're not doing it, right? You knew Sony wasn't going to do it, or at least in that well, form. Well, so. Shuhei Yoshida actually said, like, to the announcement, he was kind of like, who cares? Like, we, <laughs> why? <laughs> right. we're, he, the, his exact answer was like, we're looking to do stuff new and exciting in future tech. Like, we're not trying to bring you back to what we had last gen. Right. Yeah, I mean, if obviously, like I said, for us... I, I know I won't use it because I won't go back and play. I'll be too busy playing all these great games we're talking about, right? I mean, right. even the Xbox is releasing, you know, new Halo, new, you know, Cuphead, you know, uh, Sea of Thieves by Rare, you know? I mean, these are the things I, I'm excited to do. You know, a micro lens doesn't, isn't affected by, you know, or new technology in general isn't affected by backwards compatibility. So, right. For me, I don't care. I, I told David this. I said, the number one person that stood up is the CEO at GameStop. He was praising them for everything in the world because now they just sold a bunch of used games again. And David said back to me, and I think this is the most powerful thing, as a developer, why would you want backwards compatibility? You don't. Because what happens is, is that you're no longer getting the money that could be given to you for new titles or for right, new because games. Because GameStop is in it now. Because well, GameStop and this is, is the, the example I gave him. You know, Handsome Jack Collection just came out. Well, if I have backwards compatibility and they were showing Borderlands. Borderlands I don't know. Yeah. yeah, they're showing Borderlands. You know Borderlands is going to be one of the ones that they d- let you bring over. And it's like, well, okay, if I'm someone that doesn't have a ton of money, this is great for me. And I'm not trying, because I, d- I am definitely a guy that doesn't have a ton of money. Okay, so I'm definitely in this boat. But even here, I'm ridiculing it because for the developer, Gearbox, it's like, okay, well, we just put out a $60 Handsome Jack collection, all the content, boom, you can have it on your Xbox One. But now we have backwards compatibility, and you can cut them out of the pie by going and buying the $10 Borderlands 2, which is plenty of content to play for a long time. And then buy the con- you know the DLC if you see fit, or just play Borderlands 2 until you have your fill. I mean, I don't know. To me, it's like... If the, for developers, I'd be like, you're not bringing my games back. I'm not signing no legal crap. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shiv says that as a developer, you do want it. And some of them might. I mean, but, I, you know, and, and the reason that you just gave is why I think, like, hey, it wouldn't be, you know, it, w- it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't benefit them. You know, in Gearbox's particular situation, for sure, um, when they spend a lot of money, you know, dropping out the new thing. A few things it does do, though, that like we're seeing a lot of remasters and stuff like that. Like we're seeing Gears being remade. We saw Halo, the entire thing get remade, right? Which is cool because then you can experience the whole thing if it works. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm a realist here, but the if you've never played Mass Effect One, right? And and Mass Effect Four is now coming out. You can go back and play that, and you can even stream it through that system now, which is which is, I mean, that's pretty cool to yeah, be I mean, able to go back and and play some of those, and and maybe. Some of maybe some of you guys won't ever do that, but there's some games that I that I was pretty fond of on the 360 that I probably wouldn't have touched again. But it was like, man, I would like to, and right. and now I will because I don't have to bring my 360 back into my office or back to my back to my living room. It well, can stay with and, my kids. And Shiv, or Shiv makes a good point. He says keeping your titles in the spotlight is a great way to keep the series alive. And so, like in in that in that instance of you know where you want to go back and you play that game, and you know number four is coming out. You know what I mean. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, I want to catch up on the series. Maybe you're new to Xbox. Then, yeah, you could go back and get those games for cheap. And, and maybe you become more invested in that series. I definitely see that point of view. Um, so, yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm not, and I want to say just for the hate mail that's inevitably coming here, I'm not saying there's not a market for this. <laughs> there's definitely a market. There's plenty of gamers that don't go online and play games online that play just relaxed and, you know, play their Final Fantasies, RPGs, whatever, adventure games. So I get I get that there's a market. I just don't understand why this is a huge deal. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I understand. I, I, I think I, I just feel like it's bigger than it really is, but maybe it's not. Maybe it is to me and you, Null Zero, but maybe it's not to everybody else. Uh, well, it was a big deal when they released these systems or when they announced these systems and everybody was like, it, oh, I can't believe they're not backwards compatible, yeah, right? Yeah. So they, they listened to the people that complained then. Yeah. But at this point, nobody cares. And if you guys yeah. remember how the 360 did it, they – said, hey, we're backwards compatible with the original Xbox games. It's maybe 40 games. 
Yeah, it wasn't many. T tops, right? There was not. But all, pe know. all people cared about then was Halo 2 anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and honestly, honestly, it matters for about a year because you want to play those old, you know, the time has already passed that right. it's been out. That it would have been know? really good, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree where they would have, where they really would have benefited from that is. But you needed it at launch. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, ReCore, which is a new game. Obviously, this was really cool to see. If you guys didn't see that, go check out that trailer, ReCore. Uh, the new controller, I'm pumped. Oh, I'm, pu oh, I'm pumped yeah. for multiple reasons. I'm pumped because um, I love that they that they are trying to make sure they're staying on top of the competitive community, right? Mm -hmm. I really think that's cool. I, I love to see Xbox. You know, everybody knows most of us play on PS4 mainly. Josh plays on on the Xbox mainly. But it's awesome to see both these both these consoles do well because it benefits us. You know, and as Josh said to me, you know, PlayStation pushed Microsoft into what they are now, out now, now, and and so it's really good to see you know them push each other, and I hope that PlayStation responds with a, with a, with a controller as well. I feel sorry for Scuff Gaming if that happens because mm -hmm. <laughs> they might no longer exist. Uh, Microsoft basically gave a middle finger to Scuff Gaming oh at my the conference. Gosh, did they give that controller is the most customizable? It's yeah. a oh, Scuff dude. controller. It's a Scuff yeah, controller. Time, That's what it is. Real, bro. Yeah, time for shoot. Sure. It's got but it's got yeah, more. way more way more changes than you can make to it. To no, they, it has all the stuff that a Scuff. If you get everything on a Scuff, <laughs> it's literally a Scuff <laughs> controller. It's just you probably are gonna pay a lot less. Go ahead, go ahead, Tinks. I got to touch the controller. That's all what, I wanted to say. What, what, do oh. you, what do you think about it? <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. I don't even like the PlayStation, I mean, the Xbox controllers that much, but yeah, it's super smooth. But it feels really good. Better, mm -hmm. What I want to know is the feel of it compared to the standard Xbox controller, because I know that like every time I hear people talk about a downside to the controller is the way it makes your hands feel. Oh, so, it feels natural. No, it yeah? feels natural. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I hope so. No zero, no zero. It, 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 scuff controllers have one pad, one switch on the back of each side. This has two on each side. Plus, you have a switch on the back where you can program any controller. Not only that, you can actually switch out these concave and convex analog sticks on the fly. Scuff, right. you well, that's buy true. One. I mean, you do, but that's what I meant is like you can all the options that are on this controller are options on scuff controller. Maybe you can't get all the options in one controller with all, but. I mean, they basically, it's like they went to Scuff Gaming, and they're like, okay, let's see all the options. All right, make a controller that can do all of that. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, then, it, it, and it then looks, as it they did that, awesome. they sent, I'm sure they basically sent a, a letter to the CEO of Scuff Gaming and said, <laughs> yeah. it was very short. It was like, uh, dear Scuff Gaming, F you. Right. From yeah, Microsoft. We're taking Phil your business. Spencer, thank you. Uh, Destin out here from the chat was saying, just wondering from a price to performance ratio perspective, how much better can you game with the new controller over a standard one? And I want to answer that just from my limited experience with Control Freaks. And I'm going to say it's going to be night and day. The, the position of the thumbsticks, yeah. the feel of the thumbsticks, the responsiveness, um, I don't have to move my hands as much when I use my controller to get on target or to stay on target like it, it it's almost well, to me i think it will be it and it's be different for every day. person and that's why there's so many different control freaks at different heights right, right. because for mm -hmm. me i have smaller hands so uh i used to use control freaks back in the day when we when we did mlg tournaments all the time when we were going around me and david um but i don't i don't use them really anymore on my on the playstation controller it fits my hand almost perfect but on this Xbox controller, on the top analog stick, a lot of people have complaints because these are breaking, they're snapping off because they don't they the, they don't turn really well, okay? And there's a lot of complaints about that analog stick. Well, they they're addressing it with this controller. I mean, you can mm -hmm. the high you, you can adjust almost anything, and so it's it's really really cool. Like I said, it's it, it makes me want to go buy one and play my my Xbox more. So mm -hmm. it might not have that effect on everybody else, but on me it does. Well, uh, and so, it, it's 150 bucks, right? Right. It's steep. And, it's a good, and it's, that's a good, uh, no, that's it's, a good value, though. It's all magnetic stainless steel, and they've been running tests on it. The one, the one D pad, they said they've already rotated that thing a million times in their Ooh. testing labs, and it's still going strong. So I mean, basically, that D pad, if you're into fighting games, that thing is going to be. Everything's gonna be stellar, and they've yeah. raised those sticks, like you were saying, Troy. Like they've, they've, a, you, you can put different height sticks in there so that you can get it to where you like it. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's just, it's a great move by them to say competitive games stay with us. We have a new controller. It's going to be rechargeable for goodness sakes. Thank Mm -hmm. the Lord. Um, So, I mean, look, overall, Xbox has been listening to the community and they've done a great job at E3 showing, hey, look, and, but, and I'll say this now, the biggest difference between them and PlayStation, and I'll probably get some haters for this, is that Xbox showed stuff they're doing right now. Like this year or in the next 12 months, this is what's hitting their console. PlayStation did a lot of stuff like, hey, look, this is what's coming. This is what we have. This is what's planned out. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you know, they, they had a great deal. You know, obviously Fable Legends, Oculus Partnership. I don't know how much that matters. I mean... Uh, I, I don't. I would rather have a 360 controller, probably with my Oculus Rift, if I had one, than a than an Xbox One controller. But yeah. you know, m- maybe I can use the new controller with it. You know. Well, you, with sweet. Oculus, unless something's changed since <clears throat> the time I got to play with it at E3, I'm not E3, but when I was at AMD, was Oculus has an open interface. Unless, like, say it becomes compatible with your Xbox One. The, it has an open interface, like when it's on your computer, so you can use any input device. You can use mouse right. and keyboard, whatever you want. So it's it's just that they got a partnership where it comes with an Xbox to kind of Xbox is trying to say, hey, look, we have a VR headset too. Yeah, but it, really, they they don't. I mean, they have, it's, a, they have an AR headset, right? Yeah, yeah they I mean, have AR. That's what they're going for. Yeah, so obviously their micro lens is their big ticket, right? Yeah. Something different, something new. I love it. I thought it was so cool. If you haven't seen this demo, the micro lens with Minecraft, go check it out. I mean, the guy leans in and he sees the other player that's playing on their tablet. Yeah. You know, I was and... waiting for a blue screen. I honestly was waiting for a blue screen while he was doing that. Just uh, he leans in and then blue screen of death, Windows crashes. Uh, but man, it didn't. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. So you know, I was so happy to see that. That was awesome. I still say don't 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 buy day one. No, but I, dude, listen. I don't think this is something they even put it in. They even put a time limit on, and it's good. What an Xbox showed us. Look, this is the road we're going down. They didn't mention nothing about Connect while they were there, bro. And I applaud yeah. them for that. Like I seriously applaud them. for I that applaud because... them because I don't care about Connect. But I, uh, the thing that I like, you say you support Connect. Oh, we support Connect. We support Connect. Stop. Don't even say you support Connect. If you really like, you don't. Get rid of the thing. Stop selling it at GameStop like as a Sony's standalone. Sony's saying they support the Vita. They don't do yeah, that either. Don't, so. <laughs> don't say you support it. Like, if you support it, then support it. But you don't. So stop saying you do. All they need to do with the new Xboxes is they need to take the microphone from Connect and put it in the box so you can still talk to your Xbox. <laughs> that's the only thing that I enjoy about my Connect down in my living room is I can literally tell it to do almost anything when it comes to my entertainment You know center why? It it's so it. you don't have to click through 30 other menus to get oh to my that once you learn. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. but I'm even talking just like, for instance though, like when you're playing, like today I tossed a nade at the feet of two guys in trials and watched their bodies cartwheel out of the tunnel. And, <laughs> and that was awesome. And it was like, I wanted to say Xbox record that, but I don't have the connect up here, so then it's the you know you've got to go you got to open up the menu and, no, so, some and hit X. What's, and so, I, what's the process of hitting like if you want to record? I'm curious because I don't play a lot. You of double tap, you double tap the guide button uh-huh. and then hit X. Okay, so it's slightly. I yeah, mean, there's, PlayStation. There's steps in PlayStation. PlayStation is literally share square done, and the only reason I One like the PlayStation button. a little bit better is because you're relying on a double tap as opposed to pressing a, a button. You know exactly what it's going to do. Yeah, I agree. I well, agree. And the one thing with Oculus, too, and I know I'm, I'm grabbing at straws succeed, here. If Oculus is going to succeed, it has to grab gamers. I listened to a number of podcasts talking about that very yep. thing. If Oddcast, if, if Oculus can get gamers, that thing's gonna that thing's gonna go. And so, uh, if if they don't, they're gonna be in trouble. That's the not next thing. That's what I said. Hey, I, I I heard you need to connect to send a friend request. <laughs> uh, this, this is a joke for everybody that wants to know because I have been playing on my Xbox lately, and literally anybody that's on Xbox can definitely agree with me. To ex- to go add somebody as a friend that has added you is a beating. And Josh is like, unless you use the phone. So I have been, I downloaded the app on my phone. I've been using it, so I haven't had to go through those thirty steps. Because that's why, that's why they insane. did this. They're like, yeah, look, we'll make it to where that the the only way to use this system is if you use smart glass or connect. That's no, it. No, <laughs> dude. Here's the deal. Josh actually said it the best, and we'll move off this. But 
Josh said they developed this console to work with a Kinect because they did originally. They did. They, they they wanted you to learn all the commands, and mm-hmm. then be able to say it really quick, and it will jump to it. And it does work better if you do that. Mm-hmm. It really does. Instead, of, because it it definitely is more clunky if you're guiding. If you do that, the, and it and it actually hears you right. It does pretty well though. It does pretty well. Sure. But I've had my issues with when I had a connect of Xbox turn off Xbox tur- Xbox turn off like come on. <laughs> Tinks, you, you talking to your Xbox a lot? I mean, you you yelling at it? I um don't really play my. Xbox. She's like on a lonely night with a, a glass of Merlot. I play <laughs> speak to my connect. Xbox play. I, ju- I just say dirty things to it and it doesn't answer me. It's just like just like anyone I've ever dated. So oh. you know. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Well, um, obviously, right they, the last thing was the Gears of War, which, you know, I've been playing the beta. I actually enjoy it. I, I wish they would let me play with friends. Uh, for those of you out there that, that haven't played it or haven't got a chance to play it, you can't actually play it with friends, which is disappointing. Yeah, it is. Um, but it, it looks great. It feels great. It looks great. It, it looks like Gears. It doesn't feel as good as being able to wall bounce in Gears 2. No, but it's Gears One still. It is so. Gears One. I I don't I don't fault it there. Look, I said it to I think either Josh or you, Troy. When it works, when I didn't have problems with lag, oh, beautiful. God, listen to those bodies explode when you sh- get yes. that shotgun shot or you get that snipe shot on the head. Oh, it's fantastic. But I dealt with quite a bit of lag, and that's disappointing. Yeah. And I get it's beta, and it maybe it'll be different in the well i think they're doing this so they don't have and josh actually said this to me they're doing it so they don't have a master chief release situation again and i um i you know obviously rob ferguson doesn't want to have that um you know and and they won't so well i don't even think i mean i agree i think it's more than just a master chief but it's like it's just a thing a way to start testing now for gears 4 servers well, and then you got um, the Ultimate Edition, which I'm super excited about. I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's gonna, it comes out in August. I'm probably going to get it. And David said, well, the Taken King comes out right after it. I probably won't get it. We both know you're going to get it. So we, I'm telling you, man, right now I'm sticking <laughs> strong to my guns as much as I love Gears. As it gets close. August 25th, before, Gears comes the, out. As it's the week September before. September 15th, uh, Taken okay. King. It's like literally about 10 days of gameplay, give or take. If I, call you, if, if I call you on the 24th <laughs> and I say, hey, I'm going to buy it right now. I'm going to get it. You're going to be like, okay, I'll go get it. I'll be right back. I'll just make sure I'm broke at the time. So it'll be like, I can't afford it, bro. And then Troy will be like, oh, I bought it for you. I'm like, you yeah. mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want it. Oh, you man. Know you well, then want we had, uh, you know, I, I, and I applaud Xbox. Great show. Man, they did, a, they did a great job. They really did start it off strong. Um, I mean, all the changes they've made over there. It is their best Xbox One year so far. Absolutely. And gonna it have- had to be. Let's make no mistake. It had to be. Yeah. If it wasn't, oh, my gosh, it was over. It was over when you're behind and you have that luxury. And I was I was reading some article somewhere about that, just about how a lot of people felt PlayStation didn't bring their A game because they didn't need to. You know what I mean? It, it's like I don't know if I necessarily agree with it on that level, but I I definitely think of the two shows Microsoft brought it, um, and I was very impressed. I'm not I'm by no means a Microsoft fanboy. Um, but I really enjoyed their show. Everything that they brought, I enjoyed. Well, I even I, liked Tomb Raider. I applaud so. Phil Spencer. He did a great job, man. He's doing a great job with them. He's he's he has he has literally turned the boat around and sailing in the right direction now. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah. It does uh, seem, so, and that's good. That's what we want. I don't want anybody to be left in the dark. Even if you choose to play on Xbox, I still want you to have. I mean, we don't want you to have a crappy yeah. system or anything. Or so bad games or whatever. I'm glad that they brought it and that it's, you know, PlayStation now has to step their game up because competition will do that. Now the bar has been set. So now we're waiting on Sony's new controller and their answer to a lot of these things. So it, I think we're in a good spot for gaming coming up here in 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tinks, uh, are you there? Are you are you hanging around? She might have stepped away for a second. I was going to ask her what she what she thought about as far as her overall view of E3. We'll ask her in a second. Can you hear uh, me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. It's like my... I'm sorry. Technical hey. difficulties here. I, I just heard you say, is she around? What did you say? No, sorry. Uh, I was wondering, you know, Hambone just said Xbox looks like it's got a good year. It's a good year of gaming. Did you get a really good feel that, like, 
this is a this is going to be a lot of a lot of fun here in the next year or two after you've seen everything that you saw at E3 that's like it's it was a it was a huge E3 for gaming in general. I feel like I feel like we can all actually use our next gen consoles for next gen games. So yes, my answer is yes. Awesome. 